But one way, one way or another, the dollar is out of the picture. That would mean again that there would be much less demand for US dollars. The reason why that is so important is because if the demand for U.S. dollars diminishes... I, I really think that so many times when I see a problem, I'm like, hey, it will be so much easier with blockchain, so... Uh, Implementation of ISO is not an end to itself. It is a means to an end, an aspiration to deliver value across the payments chain. So what we do is we break that down into what we have framed the crypto maturity model. So we break it down into phases to allow you to really um, enter the space with confidence. Reveal to themselves the benefit of fast settlement times, very low transaction costs. It's gonna be gradual, then sudden. In exchange, we want you to price oil in dollars. There's no reason why oil has to be priced in dollars. It could be priced in uh, today, euros, back then, Deutsche Marks, uh, Swiss francs, Japanese yen, gold. You can price oil a lot of different ways. Know what you hold? Enjoy the ride, pal. Welcome back to some more Moon O'Clock News. Shout out to the latest. Uh, appreciate you stopping by, tuning in. We got the total global cryptocurrency market cap today at 2.56 trillion, down almost 5% in the past 24. We got XRP currently in the number eight spot, right around 48 cents. Stellar XLM in the number 42 spot, right beneath 10 cents. We got BTC right around. 67,000 ETH right around 34, 35 hundo. We got Flare Networks right around 0 0.027, XDC 0 0.035. We got XLR down to 73, 74 cents. Songbird 0097. We got Stronghold right around 006. Zahao right around nine, nine and a half cents. Evernote 18 cents. We got one from Ripple X Dev to pop things off. Now loading XRP Ledger Apex starting soon. We got one from Big Brad Garland House, two major acquisitions in one year under Ripple's belt with Medico and Standard Custody. And a big welcome to Jack McDonald. Jack is no stranger to the XRP Ledger ecosystem and to me. Thrilled to have him join the team at Ripple leading our stablecoin initiatives. We got Jack McDonald says, very excited to share that as part of the deal close, I'm joining Ripple as the SVP of stablecoins to lead the team bringing Ripple stablecoins to the market later this year. Though remain a CEO of Standard Custody as well, Ripple. Ripple says earlier this year, Ripple announced his intent to acquire Standard Custody and today we're pleased to share that the acquisition is now completed. Learn how this deal further enables Ripple to deliver on building the internet. A value price is an illusion. And we got Ripple X Dev. We're proud to launch the XRP Ledger Japan and Korea Fund to boost innovation and utility in the XRP Ledger and APAC. MEO Shikawa as part of the 1 billion XRP commitment from Ripple. This fund will entail tens of millions of dollars over the time to corporate partnerships, developer grants, investments, and more in the region that already calls itself home to the XRP Ledger. Innovation, all banks using XRP in Japan, 2025. Crawl walk. Then we rock it. We got paving a compliant path forward. Ropo closes standard custody acquisition and appoints Jack McDonald as senior vice president of stablecoins. The best is still yet to come. We got one from ITM trading of Saudi Arabia shifts away from the U.S. and supports trading and pricing oil in other countries. It would have significantly reduced the demand for the U.S. dollar. If Saudi Arabia really does decide to make the move away from the U.S. and does support trading oil and pricing oil in other currencies, that would mean again that there would be much less demand for U.S. dollars. The reason why that is so important is because if the demand for U.S. dollars diminishes, then we lose our biggest asset. The United States government's biggest asset, biggest thing that they export are actually U.S. dollars. With the way that the debt is right now, if we continue to see a decline in demand for U.S. dollars and for U.S. debt, then we are going to continue to see rates increase and rapid inflation, the likes of which we've never seen before. Don't get left behind and load up on your utility assets like XRP. 
XLM. We got one from Subject Views, Robin Hood. Crypto is going to be the framework that will power the financial world of tomorrow. And what was the impetus that made you break into the crypto space initially? Yeah, so we're really thinking about the this mission in our head that you know crypto is going to be uh, the framework that will power the, the financial world of tomorrow. Um, you know, traditional finance has has a lot of technical debt in some way. Uh, for example, you know, last week we celebrated that we moved to settlement at two plus one, and you know, in crypto, it's not even a question of a, of a day, right? So, um, we really think that blockchain technologies and crypto overall will be able to change and revolutionize uh, how things are working. So, really, a lot of what we are building is is towards this world. I think. Tokenization of what I said is something that we're really excited about and, and we're going to keep working on. And if when you look out maybe three to five years in the crypto space, Web3, what excites you most? I think tokenization is really something that, you know, um, I, I know it's becoming a bit of the hot word now uh, lately in, in the crypto space, but I think it's, it's really something where we are really excited. I think at, at Robinhood, you know, we see all the, the financial system between the, the brokerage and, and the other places uh, that, that we are running. And... I really think that so many times when I see a problem, I'm like, yeah, it will be so much easier with blockchain. So um, I, I think if we are able to uh, launch a good tokenized product uh, for, for real what I said, it's going to be a, a huge game changer for the industry. We got one from Nerdy, Nerdy X90. I know the implementation of ISO is not an end to itself. It is a means to an end and aspiration to deliver value across the payment chain. One of our first responsibilities is to establish the infrastructure around which the private sector can innovate and deliver value of the outside world, uh, April 8th, uh, 2024, uh, was just another day. Now, uh, I know implementation of ISO is not an end to itself. It is a means to an end, an aspiration to deliver value across the payments chain. Now, we as an infrastructure operator believe very strongly that one of our first responsibilities is to establish the infrastructure uh, around which uh, the private sector can innovate and deliver value uh, for our customers. So I'm going to stop talking and start <laughs> listening <laughs> <laughs> of the outside. We have Mr. Man XRP 95, but the traditional institutions are not in digital assets yet, meaning this market is held up by 4.8% of the largest players, and there's us, retail. Maybe opposed to entering the crypto space, actually get there. So what we do is we break that down into what we have framed the crypto maturity model. So we break it down into phases to allow you to really um, enter the space with confidence. And so we start with level zero, which is education, strategy and planning. You have the commercial side of the business looking at and, and kind of uh, understanding what types of products and services that we can offer. And then you have the enterprise risk teams within the TradFi institution that come together to most of the time create some sort of digital asset working group. And from that working group, they can then understand, okay, well, what services can we offer and how do we manage the risk when we want to introduce those level of services? Approximately 90, 95% of the TradFi space globally is in the level zero, right? We're then moving into level one, which we call open for business, right? So open for business is now being comfortable with actually allowing your retail customers to send funds to crypto businesses, but then also providing banking rails to crypto businesses themselves. So in the form of client money accounts, for example. Then level two, we've talked about synthetic crypto products, ETFs, for example, but also white label solutions. So having a bank that provides um, you know, a mobile phone banking app that allows you to purchase crypto, but not actually doing that yourself, partnering with, um, you know, a, a crypto provider um, and, and also then, um, you know, not actually physically touching it yourself. So risk mitigation. Then moving beyond that into actual having custodial infrastructure. So level three, enabling crypto deposits. Now you're actually in a position where you have the infrastructure to allow crypto deposits into and withdrawals outside of your business. And then finally, beyond deposits, where we typically see the crypto exchanges of the world. So, you know, crypto reward credit cards, staking, decentralized finance types of products and services. So, um, you know, there's there's quite a lot going on and, and that's kind of where we are at the moment. We got one from Cypress Hex. Adoption will be gradual and sudden. The gradual may take longer than we hope or wish. We're at the tipping point. Quite simply, I think blockchains and digital assets are the future of finance, really, for, for many, many asset classes. Um, 
yes, the regulation needs to evolve and mature. And certainly uh, there needs to be critical mass of both buyers and sellers and lenders and borrowers. But as uh, more banks like ANZ get involved with the services I described around tokenization, and smart contract provision, wallet infrastructure, you know, if that's coming from a trusted counterparty like a bank, like ANZ, our customers are going to be much more inclined to reveal to themselves the benefit of fast settlement times, very low transaction costs. It's going to be gradual, then sudden. Uh, and I think that's the evolution. Now, that gradual may take longer than we hope or wish, but I do think there will be a tipping point where momentum in the asset markets uh, that are digitized and tokenized will show that the, the transformation has occurred. And and also, I think that in, interoperability... We're at the digital asset investor, death of the money slash petrol dollar, October 6, 2014. Jim Rickards. One of the big props under the U.S. dollar has been what's called the petrodollar deal. This is something that came out in the mid-1970s, again, a time when the dollar was under attack. And the United States, through... Um, Henry Kissinger said to the Saudi Arabians, look, we will guarantee your security, the continuation of the rule of the House of Saud and the national security of Saudi Arabia, because they were weak militarily and they had a, and I like to say the Middle East is a bad neighborhood, they had a lot of enemies. In exchange, we want you to price oil in dollars. There's no reason why oil has to be priced in dollars. It could be priced in uh, today, euros, back then, Deutsche Marks, uh, Swiss francs, Japanese yen, gold. You can price oil a lot of different ways. But they agreed to price it in dollars in exchange for our guarantee of their continued rule and their national security. That deal worked beautifully for 30 years through the 80s, the 90s, the early 2000s. It really did put a floor under the dollar. But just last uh, December, December 2013, the president, President Obama, reneged on the deal. He engaged in uh, the beginning of detente with Iran, uh, which is a bitter enemy of Saudi Arabia. So the U.S. is now saying to Iran, uh, hey, you are, you're our cop on the beat. You're our best friend in the Middle East. Well, this is a stab in the back to the Saudis. By the way, Saudi sells most of the world these days to China, not the United States. So how long will it be before Saudi Arabia says, okay, China, we'll take your currency in exchange for oil? Uh, or maybe we'll take gold or China buys gold and gives us gold and we'll send you the oil. But one way, one way or another, the dollar is out of the picture. Again, that. We asked Tantum and Feed Bitcoin's dip below 67k has ramped up the amount of buy calls in blue. On social media, historically, when the amounts of sell calls in red is closing the gap on buy calls, that's when the panic and flood is setting in and most commonly leads to crypto bounces. And with that being said, we got mustache. I think some people here are smart enough to know that the cycle is far from over and that the generational wealth lies upon us. Doesn't take much, just perseverance. It sounds simple, but for most people out there, it's not. And the longer they take, the higher we climb on that XRP rich list, top 10% holder, 3,000 XRP, top 5% holder, 10,000, 4% holder, 13, 14,000 XRP, top 3% holder, 20,000 XRP, top 2% holder, 31,000, top 1% holder, 61,000 XRP, and the top 0.1% holder, 416,000 XRP. Let her friend know that the greatest opportunity of multiple lifetimes is still at hand, but the trains left the station. Tick tock, tick tock. Where will those bags be when that regulation drama lasts? Finally breaks open, and XRP's true price is finally revealed. Big bags, Larry glitches. glitches. Welcome to the future. Welcome to the show. I told you so, so. I told you so, so. Be our passion, cause what you focus on, you attract like a magnet. Got diamond hands, we hold.